Hello there. This is Glycon. Glycon is a motion capture platform that uses your VR equipment, and that's all it uses, and it provides motion capture for use in video games and movies and other stuff. So let me show you how this works. It's really simple. Uh, the first thing I'm, I want you to know is right now, I'm actually not standing up in real life. I'm just sitting in my chair. I've got my headset on. I've got my hand trackers on. Glycon is going to create a full body avatar though. So if I export this later, that exported data is going to be a full human uh, rig, basically. Now, you might notice in the center of my chest, there's a little icon. Starting in Glycon version 60 and forward, when you look at the video, the icon in the middle indicates which version of Glycon I'm talking about and what the export format is. So in this case, this, this version of Glycon is, uh, is the one that's going up on the server in just a little bit, and this is from Oculus Quest and it exports directly to an iClone compatible FBX file. And what I mean by that is it's based on the iClone base uh, skeleton. So when you import this into iClone, um, you don't have to do a whole lot of retargeting and figuring out the, the various combinations for the hand uh, locations and, and things like that. Um, iClone makes it really easy to retarget things, but anything I can do to reduce the number of steps you have to take as a storyteller, uh, I'm gonna do. So in this next version, this is actually a iClone specific version of Glycon that will export a rig that will fit, it just snap straight into what you're using in, in iClone. So I wanna walk through some of the features and basic setup of the product. Uh, when you first start up the product, you're using your hand controllers. And if you use the joysticks, you can move your fingers around. It's, it's that easy. And if you push the bottom button on the controller, it's this one over here, uh, this one right there on the left side, it's going to pop up this HUD. And if you hold down the button and you move it around, it moves the HUD around. And when you let go, it, it lets it go there. All of these things here at the top are buttons that have various features you can use. And if you notice there's a few missing here and one missing over here, that's because we're in setup mode right now. If we go to live mode, you'll notice that there are a few different ones that are available and a few different ones that are hidden. That's because some features make more sense in, in, in configuration and some make more sense in live mode. And then some of them are reserved for the desktop version of the app. Uh, and this is the um, Oculus Quest version. So we're gonna hop back into setup and I'm just gonna walk through these real quick. This is the general uh, info one. And all you have to do to activate these buttons is move that white ball through the, through the, uh, the button. So in this case, we've got our info. This over here will tell you a little bit of information. And over here is generally where you would interact with something. So here is our arena. If I wanted to, I could switch to a um, the unlimited ground, which looks like this. I can switch to the dojo, which looks like this. And I can switch to a, a file that I bring in on my own. In this case, I brought in a very simple round room that I can click this button right here and move into. And this is a completely blank room. It's just an empty uh, round room uh, designed basically to remove clutter from the from the images. But we're going to pop back into the dojo. Uh, another thing I want to point out is when you first come in, um, you might notice that the body is a little bit offset, maybe to one side, or maybe it's rotated a little funny. Uh, what you want to do is look straight forward for whatever direction forward is configured in the Oculus Home. And then, as it says here on the info thing, you're going to hold down these two buttons, the, the, the bottom buttons on each controller at the same time for just a second and let go. And when you do this, you'll notice that the feet and everything else recenter perfectly. And the character is basically standing up straight. And it, it calibrates this based on the height of the character that's, that's being used. In this case, the new Glycon avatar. Um, and we'll get to some other cool upcoming features here in a little bit. So the props, this takes us into the prop section. You can import your own props. For example, if I wanted to bring in a desk or something like that, I could do that here. Uh, and there's a whole video on that. The, this is the, uh, the virtual set mode where you can create your own stuff that you can interact with. Um, and basically this allows you to create a little virtual world that you're gonna be able to interact with later on when you're, when you're doing stuff. Um, this is the shuffle, this determines how you move around. So like if I have it set to hover and I move too far to left or right, uh, my feet are not going to move around. It's just going to be, they're just going to kind of hover underneath me. And shuffle will actually plant my feet on the ground. So that's 
shuffle is probably what you're going to want unless you're going to replace your own your uh, lower body animations later. Now, on the Oculus Quest, I can't do f foot tracking yet. With the Slime VR trackers, I should be able to start doing that. And there are a few other things I've got on, on the uh, near horizon that are going to allow you to track your feet in, in Steam VR, I mean, in uh, Oculus Quest. But that's not quite there yet. So um, we're going to hop. So right now it fakes it. That's my point. Uh, so also we have up here, we have uh, weapons. Now, this is an important thing to note. Um, the weapons are only stand-in models. They're not actually going to be exported, and that's because you probably have your own models you're going to want to export. But this allows you to visualize what those weapons would look like uh, so you can actually act with them, uh, kind of, and then you you're going to take this into iClone in this case and swap these out with higher quality weapons. You've got a sword, uh, a rifle, and it will automatically place the hands uh, near where you're probably going to want to put them um, in the final uh, model, I mean, in the final animation, and the same with a long sword. So in these versions, you'll notice that the shoulder of the left hand, because the left hand is going to be tracking on the sword itself, the shoulder will actually, I mean, the uh, elbow is actually controlled by the left controller when it's in sword mode. So I'm going to switch back to none here again. Okay. And then, uh, so that's weapons. We also have uh, poses. We can stand and we can sit. Now, currently, these are the only two that I've got um, set up, but very soon we'll have some other ones. So if you've got a character that needs to be sitting under a desk or sitting at a desk or something like that, that's why you would use this feature. And when you hop out back into stand mode, you're going to want to recalibrate uh, the character just to make sure he's still standing properly. And there you go. Okay, and then we have uh, all of the IK settings, and there's a ton of them. And you can alter, you can change your scale and your arm length and your leg length and all kinds of stuff here. And I'll let you tweak that as you want. Uh, and then this is a new a new feature, hand anchors, and this is really cool. The way this works is when it's active, uh, when the screen is up, if you click the hand um, the hand grip button on the Oculus Quest, uh, you can place these markers anywhere in the scene. Okay, so in this case, I've got my hand grip on my left hand active. I'm going to put it over here. Uh, let me see if I can do this without these. Yeah, if the if the HUD is up, uh, you can move it out of the way. But if the HUD is up, then you can place the markers. And the rest of the time, the, the you cannot place the markers. They're, they're stationary in place. And the idea here is this would allow you to put your hands, for example, let's say that you have a wall that you're going to um, push with your hands or a door that you need to push open. Okay, so you want to put both of these right here next to each other like this. Okay, and then if you pull the trigger on your hands, on the hand controllers, it will place your hands up against the wall where you had placed them before when you set the trackers. Okay. So the the cool thing is it locks those in place. So now while I move around, as long as I have my fingers down, uh, my, my triggers down, I can move around and those hands will be locked in place. And this allows me to do things like if I wanted to put my hands on a table and I wanted to do some acting and I don't want my hand to move off the table, Unlike a, a real uh, in a in a real room uh, with motion capture, you'll be able to put your hands on a real physical object, and so it would look real when you moved around. You can't do that in VR, and so this allows us to basically uh, cheat and and pull off the same trick. So this allows us to place these objects on the on the table, and then act like uh, there's a real physical object that we're interacting with. And that's basically it for all of the uh, setup features. Now, if we go into live mode. One of the things you'll notice is it has a start recording button and a little stop button. And the way this works is when you push the start button, uh, it's going to start a timer up here on the time on the top, top, top. It's going to do this recording thing. And then when I'm done, all I have to do is move that white ball through the stop and it's going to stop the recording. And this allows me to basically um, easily conduct an entire recording session and then uh, the, without any GUI or anything like that and and I can I can stop it on demand like that. Now you can also bring in your own audio and you can play back audio if you want. Uh, and the one of the features you'll one of the things you'll notice is this button over here is uh, active in live mode. You'll notice that it has um, use FBX. And uh, there's also an export now and an auto save. And for for um, for iClone, you're going to want to use FBX and make sure you can turn on auto save if you want. This way, in auto save mode, every time I go in here and I record an animation, no matter what it is, 
recording. As soon as I'm done and I hit, it automatically saves that, uh, that uh, animation out as an FBX file. So I don't have to mess with that later. Uh, the other thing I want to show you is here under audio, uh, this is real important. Uh, there's an, actually an option now on the Quest to record microphone. This records audio directly from your headset. So while you are recording, it's going to record the audio uh, from your headset and then export that as a WAV file along with your exported data when you save it. So when you go over here to export this, when you hit export, it's also going to save out that audio file that was recorded if you have record microphone turned on. And basically that's it. That's all it takes. Uh, that's, that's all you have to do. You can, if you needed to do motion capture uh, using an Oculus Quest, you could literally put on your headset and record the audio, I mean, record the whole session uh, and be done in a matter of seconds uh, versus considering if you, if you needed to put on a motion capture suit and go through everything. And of course, obviously this is only going to give you upper body animation uh, for the Oculus Quest in the Quest mode. Now, if you're using Steam VR mode on a desktop system, you get full body tracking. That's a whole other video, a whole other thing we're going to talk about later. But for the Oculus Quest, that's what it gives you. Now, the Oculus Quest has one more really cool feature. I'm going to show you that now. So I'm going to um, hop back into uh, setup mode. And to do this, I'm going to lean forward a little bit. I'm going to take my hand controllers. Actually, turn off my heater. I'm going to take my hand controllers. I'm going to place them on the ground. And when I do that, what actually, I'm going to recalibrate where I'm standing first. I'm also going to turn off these, uh, I'm going to turn off the hand trackers. There we go. Okay. I'm going to place my hand controllers on the ground. <clears throat> and when I do that, you'll notice after a couple of seconds, I now have uh, my hands here. Now, the avatar is uh, whitish green, and the hands that you'll see are black. And the idea here, the, the basic uh, idea here is the, the white parts that you see here are what's actually going to be, this is the actual skeleton. The black part is what the Oculus Quest is actively tracking. Okay, so your fingers may be a different size, a different, um, slightly different location, different offset, but it should be pretty close. And so this will give you an idea of both, of both what, you, what your hands are actually seeing, what, what the Oculus Quest actually sees, and what uh, Glycon sees. So there you go. So you can do some really high, high uh, quality hand tracking with no gloves. And all it takes is just, is just using your hand, hands right here in front of the Oculus Quest. And you can do some really cool stuff with us. And there are a few videos I've done explaining how to do that. So if you needed to use, uh, if you want to record high quality hand animation for any reason, and you want to put that onto an iClone character, you, you, it takes like no effort. You put on your headset you put the controllers down and suddenly you have full hand control and you can just record your stuff out and you save it and you're done. And you map that onto your animation in iClone. It's real easy. Now, one drawback to the hands is they have to be visible. So if you move your hands where, it can't, where they, they become invisible, it's going gonna, it's gonna to kind of mess up. It's going to glitch out a little bit. I've tried to smooth that out a little bit. And over time, that's going to get better. But in, in the meantime, just keep in mind that as long as the headset can see your hands, your hands are going to be in pretty good, pretty good shape. So you want to do this in a well-lit room. And uh, yeah, that, that's basically it. So this is the version 60. We have a whole new avatar system. And the reason we have a new avatar system is I was recording one of the earlier videos and I realized that some of the problems I was running into, uh, I, I thought they were in Glycon. And it turns out they weren't. They're in basically the concept of motion capture. They, they have nothing to do with, uh, with Glycon itself, and they're just kind of inherent problems that you encounter in any type of motion capture files, and, and especially with retargeting. And I started thinking about that, and I was like, wait, if this is common everywhere, why is it common? And it turns out a lot of it has to do with the skeleton uh, that you're exporting and the skeleton as it stands when you're, when you're recording. And I thought, well, that's interesting. Um, what if I created the skeleton uh, myself uh, so that I had an absolute control over how all of that worked? And I based the skeleton off of the export format. And then I created a rig system that allowed me to scale the, at the, the character basic, basically uh, um, precisely as I need it. And, and that's what this version is. So in the next few weeks, you're going to see some really cool precision uh, upgrades to, to Glycon as I start rolling out the features 
of the new avatar system. But this version is the first one out that's going to have the new avatar in it. And this one's specifically made for iClone. So if you're an iClone user uh, and you have and you have a Glycon, go grab this version, especially if you're on Oculus Quest, obviously. Uh, that's This is going to be awesome. You're going to love it. Uh, we're going to roll out the desktop version very soon, which will be for Steam VR and iClone and and uh, probably other uh, platforms. Um, I've got Blender almost ready, Unity is almost ready, uh, Unreal is almost ready, and Battlefront 2 is almost ready. So as I roll out those versions, uh, you will have a specific one in the download section for that platform, and it will have a little uh, indicator. Basically, it will say this is Glycon uh, Quest, uh, uh, Glycon Oculus Quest for iClone. Okay, so it'll be for the, it'll say the platform and the headset you're going to use for it. Ah, okay, so I think that's it for this version. This has been a, a huge undertaking to get everything to this point. Um, and I appreciate everyone's patience. Uh, for more information, go to glycon3d.com and uh, I'll be sending this version out today. I hope everyone loves it. Thanks and have a great day.